What's going on guys? Corey Smith here, CoreFX, bringing you another weekly market analysis video. Today is September 29th, 2018, coming to the end of September, coming into a new month next week, starts the first week of October. So you guys all know what that means. That means jobs reports. That means unemployment data out of the U.S., out of Canadian economy. Um, we've got NFP, non-farm payroll, which is the change in unemployment, the unemployment percentage change, and the change in wage growth. Huge job, huge report, huge report big market mover. Um, we also have a uh, central bank meeting out of Australia with the Reserve Bank of Australia. We have retail sales out of Australia, PMI numbers out of the US and pound. Um, exciting week coming up ahead. We had a great week last week. We had some strong movers. Um, we saw the US Federal Reserve hike interest rates. We have a lot going on, political tension with Brett Kavanaugh, the Supreme Court nominee in the US economy, I mean government. Uh, the economy's shrugging it off, but you know, something... Um, to look for there this week for sure, as there's an FBI investigation that's gonna last a week going on to determine this. Huge, huge, huge lifetime appointee given the conservatives control in the Supreme Court. We got Roe v. Wade, abortion, a lot of different things that were up for grabs if that happens to be revisited. Um, but I just wanna let you guys know, I appreciate all you guys stopping in to watch this video. If you guys have not been to one of these videos before, I do a full dive into the technical charts for the Forex markets. I go over all the major indexes, the Euro, the dollar, the yen, pound, franc, Aussie, New Zealand, um, Canadian, all of those. I go into all the US dollar crosses, all the major pairs we call them in the Forex, the majors, the US dollar crossed against all the other of those main pairs I just talked about. That makes up about 80% of the trading in the Forex market. So I cover all those pairs, whether they're on my watch list or not. Also go over my watch list, what I'm watching for this week, why I'm watching it, how the trades are going to set up, what I'm going to be looking for. Um, just a full on technical analysis breakdown. Anybody who's been watching these videos before, I really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch them. Uh, I can't thank you guys enough for the support. Anybody who's new to these videos, thank you for giving it a shot. Please stick with it. See how you like it. Throw me a comment if you like it. If you want me to do anything differently, throw a thumbs up. Subscribe to the channel so you guys can get notified as these videos come out. But I really, really appreciate you guys taking the time to watch these. Check out the website, corefxtrading.com. we got a full course as well as a monthly signals chat room where I share my trades throughout the week as they develop. Uh, share exact entries, stop loss, take profits, what I'm looking at. We do private webinars every week. We've got a full members section with free videos um, to the members. I also have a blog section on the website and a video section where I upload free content constantly. Make sure you check them out. Links are below. Uh, appreciate you guys. Thank you very much. I'm going to go ahead and dive into the charts now, and I'll catch you guys in. Alrighty, so diving into the charts here, starting with the Dixie. This is the US dollar index. As you guys can see, we were seeing some bearishness. We rejected this zone here at 95.50, which is, as you can see, this gray box, a really strong resistance. Sold off. 94.50 was holding a support for a few days. And then we did get this break below last week. Strong bearish candle broke below. Hit this now 94 support. Hit this daily trend line, as you can see, with this red line here. And we did, in fact, get a bounce this week. So the U.S. Federal Reserve hiked interest rates again as there was a 96% chance of that happening. So we knew this was happening. This wasn't a surprise. Um, they hiked rates again, and uh, the dollar saw some bullishness afterwards, Thursday, Friday. Um, you know, a little bit of optimism in the U.S. economy. Uh, another rate hike is on the table for before the end of the year, most likely like December meeting. Um, but that is what gave us some bullishness here in the U.S. dollar, just some optimism and view on the dollar. So we have approached this 95.50 level again, broken through that to 50 SMA, but getting a little initial rejection from this zone. So really this week, we're going to watch again for this range. We want to see if the dollar can break above this 95.50. If it does, that'll give us some, some good opportunities to look for long U.S. dollar crosses. And if it rejects this zone and starts to sell off, maybe we can ride it back down to at least the 94.50 level here, potentially even back down to 94. Um, but that's what we're looking for out of the dollar here to start this week. Out of the euro, as you guys can see, we were in this downtrend. We were in this basing pattern, broke lower, set a lower low. It looked like we were going to move into a downtrend, but then broke right back up above that 110.50 support, pulled back, set a higher high after it pulled back here, broke this structure, set a higher high, pulled back set a higher low here, pushed again, setting a higher high, rejected off 113 though, pulled back now, and now we are retesting prior structure, right? So prior structure is this higher low. So we have a push, a pullback, a push, a pullback. We're now retesting this. If this breaks below this 110.50, it 
structure here is broken and again we are going to be looking to the downside if it bounces here and pushes higher we can look for it to come up to 113 or potentially set a new higher high so that's what we're going to be watching for the euro to see which levels hold the yen bearishness did continue as we had anticipated broke below this range off this pullback here and has just continued to sell off since as you can see with this big blue level we're entering a strong weekly support zone so we'll see how price reacts here we are still bearish the yen but again like i always say we don't want to be chasing this bearishness as we're seeing this bearish move we don't want to chase this we want to wait for it to pull back maybe come back up to this level after it rejects that weekly level and then maybe look for some shorts um looks like we could see a strong yen beginning this week We'll flip over into my watch list after this at some yen pairs, what I'm watching for. But um, all in all, this, this pair is still in a strong downtrend, but it is nearing strong support. So we have to be cautious what we do. British pound wasn't a downtrend. Reversed it to last week. Broke above, setting a new structure, higher high here. Pulled back, now setting a higher low. Retesting structure in here. Pushing back up is the next thing to anticipate. This line shouldn't be here. That's old. So what we should anticipate now is this level to hold on this trend line and price to make another push to the upside, right? So we could see either a retest of this higher high or potentially price to even blow through that and set a new higher high. Come on here. Um, if it breaks this trend line and breaks this 50 SMA in support level here, then obviously we have to shift our focus and uh, shift our bias, but that's, that's what trading's all about, right? It's not about being right, it's about making money. So we want to adjust with the markets as they change and not get too anchored to any one belief. So this is what we are anticipating and biased towards, but this could easily just sell off and reverse that thought process. So just gotta be on our toes and ready to take what the market gives us. Canadian dollar here, still moving in this choppy type channel range, whatever you wanna call it. This 76.50 level held twice and is now coming back up to it, as you can see with this strong jump we got in the CAD here. Uh, this coming week, we have Canadian dollar job support on Friday, which will have a big influence on the CAD. But, um, you know, sentiment and speculation leading up to um, this event and this uh, jobs report is going to be what we're watching for and what we're trying to see. So um, really want to be watching the 76.50 level. If price comes up and rejects it and starts to sell off, then we could be looking for shorts. But if price blows through this and inevitably will break 200 SMA in doing that, that will be a huge bullish sign to us that there's some strength in the CAD. Breaking technical levels could be a good opportunity to look for some long CAD positions. Swiss franc got crushed this week. As we said, it was uh, about 2.5% uh, weakness, 2.5% move to the downside in one week this week. As you can see from Monday to Friday, that is a very strong sell-off. We were in a trend reversal, so we had broken structure, higher high, higher low, higher high. Now we've broken structure again, sitting a lower low. We're also breaking the 50 SMA, so this is something we want to watch for. Now price could, you know, pull back, retest this zone, and then move lower. Price could now reject the 50 SMA maybe on the open this week, and this could be a, a strong pullback, and maybe it continues the upside. Maybe we just range around down here until price figures out where it wants to go. All in all, though, we have to really just wait and see what it tells us and what it's showing us and uh, go from there. But there's some really strong bearish momentum in the Swiss franc at the moment. Australian dollar. Um, as you guys can see, still respecting this downtrend. This looks a lot like the Aussie dollar cross because the U.S. dollar is very heavily weighted in these uh, indexes of these charts. So as you can see, we're at the trend line, 50 SMA pullback after a lower low to make a lower high. As you can see, we got rejection candles off this zone. Price is starting to sell off off of it. You could take another look at this in a different light and say this could be an inverted head and shoulders forming, which we will be watching just in case. But this trend line holding is one of the big factors because the right shoulder forming would have to break that trend line. And that would probably also be breaking this 50 SMA by that time as this is coming down. So that would invalidate our short signals and downtrend anyways. So these are the two playouts we want to be keeping an eye on, whether this reverses and we get this inverse head and shoulder, which means we'll be looking for a break of this 7350 neckline, or if this continues to sell off and then we're looking for a target down here of about 71 to the downside. New Zealand dollar, um, this one as well is moving in a downtrend. This is the weekly. As you guys can see, it's under this support turn resistance now. 
pulled back up to it and then had a bearish week this week Taking to the dollar to the daily chart here you can see a little more what i'm talking about still following this downtrend setting lower lows lower highs set a lower low pulled back to retest structure on this lower high 67 is a very strong level looking left you can see it was a very strong support strong break pulled back retested it as strong resistance strong move away when it touched it it's back up to it now so we could see this continue to sell off we had a nice bearish engulfing candle here on Thursday. So there are a lot of signs of the bearishness in New Zealand dollar. So that is what we're going to stick with as a bias for now until we get some kind of clear direction and uh, you know, something else comes to light. S&P 500, the U.S. dollar stock market index. Um, this is the top 500 companies in an index showing the overall performance of the stock market. You have the Dow Jones, NASDAQ, New York Stock Exchange, all that as well. But S&P 500 is typically the most commonly followed. Still in an uptrend, still setting record highs, pushed higher. This week we did have a pullback, but it's still respecting structure here, still holding on the support. We are seeing some pullbacks in momentum. You can see these upper wicks as buyers tried to push the markets higher Wednesday, Thursday, and Friday, and all got pushed down. There's a lot going on politically right now in the U.S. with uh, Supreme Court Justice nominee Brett Kavanaugh and all these sexual allegations going on with him right now. The uh, Senate uh, committee voted and... Um, you know, has passed him on to the Senate vote, but the Senate vote has now uh, delayed it as they want to have a one week FBI investigation to see what's really going on with the allegations and if they're true or not. And if, uh, you know, that, that has a big factor on, um, you know, it's a lifetime appointee when you become a Supreme Court justice in the United States. It's a big deal. And with Kavanaugh coming in, the conservatives would have a majority, which brings Roe v. Wade and a lot of massive court cases back into light. So um, it is a really monumental decision whether he does or doesn't get approved. And if, if this keeps getting delayed and we have the midterm elections in November, the Democrats win the majority in the House, they can then vote to not approve his appointing. And ultimately, then it'll get pushed back to this, the justice not getting approved until 2020 election, presidential election, and so on. So this is a very, very monumental history in U.S. politics um, and something that is most likely going to be watched. The market's Closed bullish Thursday and Friday amidst all of this was just a very great sign. It shows investors and, and consumers confidence in the economy, even with all this going on. Um, but it is certainly something to keep an eye on and most likely why there hasn't been too much movement as, as markets are kind of waiting to see what plays out. Gold, still doing what we anticipated, right? We are calling this downtrend since this trend line broke up here. It's been selling off. I've been telling you guys, you know, buy the uh, rallies. I mean, sell the rallies, sorry. As price has been rallying, I've been saying just if you're trading gold, just look to sell the rallies. And uh, it's been working out. This range, it did break below this week. It's pulled back to retest, but um, I do think that could continue to sell off. Another thing to keep an eye on with all this um, Kavanaugh and political stuff in the U.S. as this risk on risk off theme will have an influence on it. Oil, very strong week here for the oil. Um, coming up to this 75 resistance up here, this is the level to watch. And this is where we want to see how price reacts. This is where we'll be looking for things like divergence and maybe double top, triple top type patterns, candlestick patterns on this zone. If we get strong rejection wicks like we saw here when we hit it, um, doji candles and decision bearish engulfings off it, then we can look for a sell off. If it just comes up to the zone, stalls a little bit and then rips through, that could show us, you know, strong oil is coming. So that's what we're watching here with those pairs. Now switching over to the US dollar majors. Starting with the euro, um, really tough pair lately. Um, a lot of mixed signals. We did break out of this, you know, we had similar to the euro index that we just saw. We were in this short basing pattern in the downtrend, broke lower, then immediately reversed back into the range. This very strong 115.50 um, blue weekly support I have drawn here is very significant level. Price initially touched it again this Friday and rejected it. So we'll have to wait and see what this zone does. Um, if price bounces, maybe this is just, you know, a drastic pullback within this trend changing higher high, higher low, higher high. It's pulling back now to retest structure here. Maybe it bounces and makes another push or it blows through this level. Then we could look for a play like this, sell it when it comes back to retest this and try to catch that move. Um, so Euro is not really showing us too clear signs, not on my immediate watch list for a trade, but it is still something to keep an eye on. Pound dollar is a different story. I am looking for long setups on this pair. Um, we did reverse the trend. We broke this downward trend line, broke structure, set a higher high, pulled back this week to set a higher low. 20 moving average SMA, 
crossed above the 50. That is a bullish crossover. So we now have the 20 above the 50, prices above the 50. I really want to watch to see if this dollar 30 support holds. If this dollar 30 support holds, I'll be looking for you know maybe a daily um, hammer candle or bullish engulfing candle off this zone. Start looking for long opportunities. If it breaks and closes below this trend line support level and 50 SMA here, that will invalidate any longs I'm looking at, and I will t no longer have it on my watch list. But as of right now, this pair certainly remains on my watch list and is something I'll be looking for longs on. Dollar CAD. Um, not on my watch list, but a play that could play out that would make it on my watch list is if after this very strong bearish engulfing rejection of this zone and the 50 SMA, if we can set a lower low, I'll be looking for a lower high to then look for shorting opportunities to ride this next move down. Um, but as of right now, we're nearing strong support. Also, 200 SMA is catching up. So we'll have to see if this bearish momentum has enough to continue lower or if this support holds and it bounces. Dollar Yen. Broke above 113, has been moving bearishly, bullish nicely. Um, hasn't been too strong of candles and moves, but you can say, see, we have a bullish day and a little bit of indecision. A bullish day, a little bit of indecision. Bullish, a little bit of indecision. Bullish. So Thursday, Friday, we had a strong bullish break above this. Um, now the play as a technical trend follower would be wait for a pullback, maybe 113 access support, and then look for a long opportunity to catch the next move. So that is our play here with dollar yen, not on the immediate watch list, but for the second half of the week, we'll look for a pullback and then potential long opportunities for it there. Dollar Swiss franc. Again, you can see this strong weakness in the Swiss franc pinned up against a strong dollar. This is one of the biggest movers of the week. So if you happen to catch this long, definitely, definitely was a great trade. We broke above this resistance level, but, um, and really broke and closed above the 50 SMA, but we'll see if it is able to continue or if maybe this, this zone here gives us some rejection, right? We've got a demand zone created from this sell-off here. We've got all of this um, supply zone, sorry, all of this support and resistance area here. So we'll see how price responds to that level. Nothing I'm looking for here. We were in a downtrend and that had a strong push higher. This could be a trend reversal, which would mean we could be looking again. Same thing I've been going over for something like this. Pull back, retest, catch the next push. But um, right now, I'm not chasing price, not looking for anything on this pair. Just going to let it develop, see what it shows me. Aussie dollar, US dollar. I, I really like this pair. If you guys follow my Instagram at core.fx, you've seen um, my breakdowns of this. If you're in the technical trading room, um, you'll see the actual breakdowns with the actual levels, the actual entry points, stop losses, take profits, all that. But uh, all in all, we've got a downtrend. We've got a retest of 50 SMA resistance. Um, uh, What's it called? Shooting star candle here, bearish engulfing candle. It's also a Fibonacci level if we drag and point this onto here. So we have a very strong setup. A lot of times these bearish engulfing candles afterwards, price will retrace a little bit, 50, 70% of the candle before moving lower. So I am still looking for this to move lower. Um, again, like with the Aussie chart, this could be forming a little bit of an inverted head and shoulders here. So we will have to wait and see how markets open and how price moves this week. But I will be looking for short opportunities. If we're able to continue lower, this could be a great opportunity to ride this move to the downside. So Aussie dollar on my watch list for sure. New Zealand dollar is another one with a decent setup. Um, nothing too crazy. <clears throat> we're kind of basing out more so than anything. But going off structure and trend, we have set a lower low. Pull back to a lower high. Kind of move down again, but pull back up to retest the lower high and structure. Push lower, made a lower low. Pulled back now to retest structure again with a lower high temporarily broke the 50 sma but as you can see price then did reject it we had uh multiple indecision candles then we had a shooting star bearish engulfing similar to the aussie dollar and price is selling off off this zone now so we could look for shorting opportunities potentially a break here you know we could we could look for a break below this level we got a counter trend line broken here as well so we could be looking for now this to move lower um off of that but all in all, another bearish looking chart here out of the New Zealand dollar as trend structure and following is continuing. New Zealand dollar, Japanese yen. Um, as you guys can see here, we've been in a nice downtrend. We double bottomed here. I called this long last week or two weeks ago. Uh, as you guys can see, we saw some divergence. We set a lower low and a lower low here. We set a higher low and a higher low here. So price was diverging from the indicator. 
that's a reversal pattern we got a double bottom as well morning star pattern here off this strong weekly support and boom we got this pop um, so we're now at the neckline of this double bottom we have broken structure broken the 50 SMA 20s curling to cross it we broke this daily trend line and we are now in a basing pattern right we had a bullish engulfing but we are consolidating dropping down time frame zooming in a little bit you can see we are basing now this could be triple topping and could sell off but probability shows that we are above this resistance acting now as support broke this trend line acting now as support you get the 50 sma acting as support here on the four hour this could be a great opportunity for a long breakout setup so we would look for a break of this area in here to look for long opportunities to buy and catch that next push higher so new zealand yen is a great breakout opportunity for this week um and that is something on my watch list euro yen uh, this is more of a pullback trade, but as you can see, we've had some strong bullish movement, strong push, pullback, strong push, pullback. We can try to anticipate a strong push now. 20s above the 50 SMA, the 50s starting to curl upwards. We are setting higher highs and higher lows, broke up and above and pulled back. We got this long wick rejecting this support now. Uh, was resistance, now support, 200 SMAs there as well. So we could zoom in a little bit here and look for an opportunity to buy this pair once it's showing a little bit of a bounce, a little bit of momentum, and look for a long opportunity off of that pullback. Aussie yen, another pair on my watch list, similar to New Zealand yen. Um, as you can see here, we have reverse trend. We've broken above that. Um, we have this basing pattern. We have a rejection wick to the downside, bullish engulfing. Um, Again, this box here is showing consolidation. We're underneath this daily trend line, right on a strong resistance support level, above the 50 SMA now, broke structure here, setting a new higher high. So now we are looking to see if a potential breakout can occur, look for a long opportunity above this gray box, and look if we can catch that breakout push to the upside. Swiss franc, Japanese yen, similar to Euro yen. We had a strong push, pullback, strong push, pullback, and now we are back to taking it to the smaller time frame, some supply levels, some demand levels in here, right? So we have this move created this supply or this demand, sorry. And um, we have this support level here. So price is back down in support. We got some bearish momentum, so it could break through. But what we could be watching for is maybe this level holds. We come up and look for a counter trend line break here on the smaller time frames to try to show us that price is ready to move higher on the trend direction in the higher time frames. Right, so we want to be in the direction of the trend on the higher time frame, and look for an entry opportunity on the lower time frames. So um, this Swiss franc Japanese yen is pulled back. It's got some bearish momentum, so I'm not buying against that right now. Just gonna have to wait and see. Maybe we get daily uh, resistance. I mean, support holding here. Maybe we get a daily shooting star um, doji candle with a long wick rejecting. Maybe price showing this level's holding, and that could be a good opportunity to go long. Pound Swiss franc. Uh, trend reversing move here. So we've now, we set a lower low, lower high, retested lower low, now broke the lower high. What does that mean? We set a higher high. We are setting a higher high. So I'm going to wait for maybe a little more of a push. Maybe it pulls back and then we look to buy down here in this 127 range and try to get that next move of the uptrend. So if we have this as our first push of a new trend direction, maybe we get a pullback retest this structure, retest this trend line, and then maybe we get along for the next push, right? So that's how these trends work. This is bottoming out here, a little sloppy inverted head and shoulders, double bottom type of setup. But this is reversing trend, and I'll be looking for longs on this pair. Uh, Euro CAD has set a new lower low, some very strong momentum. <clears throat> so this is an opportunity where we could look for a pullback here. This is a very strong zone. Look for price to retest that, and then push to the downside, try to catch that next long. If... Uh, we throw a Fibonacci out here from this move. Take into a smaller time frame to zoom in. You know, this is right around the 382 level. If price did pull back, look for some entries up here around this zone to then catch that next move lower and potentially catch that next trend push, something like this, right? So a move like this would be great to catch. Pulls back here, look for shorts, and then maybe we get another leg like that, push down lower, which would be a great trading opportunity here out of the Euro CAD. Euro Swiss francs, another one opposite looking than that though. This is a trend reversal. So we know the, the Swiss francs been getting crushed. If we see some strength in the Euro, we could see a push here. Look for a pullback similar to that pound Swiss franc trade I just showed you. And then look for that long 
after that pullback <clears throat> to that resist to that support level there. And New Zealand Swiss franc. Um, if we see strength come to the Swiss franc this week, this is an opportunity we could be looking for, right? So we have this strong lower low push here. We're pulling back, very strong pullback, but still in a downtrend, still respecting structure, still below the 50 SMA. Coming up to this resistance, maybe we get a rejection of this resistance and look for a short to the downside and try to ride it down to the 64 maybe first and then down to the 63 to 63.50 level down here for the next target. But um, all in all, this is still in a downtrend. We are still respecting structure, SMA. We could throw a little trend line action in here, show that price is respecting this trend line and we could have a uh, you know, decent setup here coming if 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 this resistance structure sma trend line holds that is an if that is why we develop bias develop opinions and look to see if they play out if not if price blows through these levels i'm not looking for shorts anymore my analysis is invalid and now i'm looking for either longs because it's a good setup according to my plan or if it's not fitting my plan i look for a different setup on a different pair all right guys um that does it for what i'm watching this week that does it for the indexes, the S&P 500. Um, next week, we have some good news events. We've got the first week of the month. October um, is the beginning next week. And Friday of next week, October 5th, I believe it is, is going to be our jobs report, job data out of the U.S. and Canada. We have a central bank meeting out of Australia on Tuesday and then some PMI and retail sales and stuff like that throughout the week. So we have three major currency events, Australian dollar, CAD, and U.S. dollar. Uh, to be watching for should be some good movement this week again with this political tension in the u.s with brett kavanaugh as i've been telling you guys about this there is some likely volatility based off equity markets and all so should be a good trading week should be some good setups um and we'll be keeping you guys updated everybody in the technical room and at the core fx course everybody else out there i'll catch you guys in next week's video i appreciate you tuning into these videos i really do thank you guys i hope you're getting something out of them any comments, feedback, or anything like that, leave them below. Um, if you like what you see, if you want to see something different, just let me know. But uh, I appreciate everybody who takes the time to watch these videos, and I'll catch you guys in the next one.